professional baseball has many great records. There's Cal Ripken's consecutive start streak of 2,632 games, Joe DiMaggio's incredible 56-game hit streak, and Barry Bonds' impressive, albeit questionable, all-time home run record, just to name a few. But what if I told you, you don't have to be the biggest just to leave your mark on the game. But actually, sometimes being smaller gives you an advantage and breaks some major league records in the process. I'm Umar from Real Take Sports, and this is Sports Revisited, the story of the shortest baseball player ever. August 19th, 1951, St. Louis, Missouri, USA. The St. Louis Browns took on the Detroit Tigers in a doubleheader that saw one of the most unlikely baseball records being shattered when 3'7 Eddie Goodell stepped up to the plate for the Browns and in the process became the shortest player ever to appear in a pro baseball game. But before we get into what actually happened on the plate, let's talk about how we got here. So for a while, baseball was truly America's favorite pastime. You know, before scandal after scandal and then the rise of American football in the late 20th century kind of took China away from the sport. But in the early 20th century, America loved baseball. Even former president Herbert Hoover was once quoted as saying, Next to religion, baseball has a greater impact on our American way of life than any other American institution. And that's saying a lot. But as good as baseball was back then, the 1951 St. Louis Browns were pretty bad. So bad, in fact, that at times it was hard for them to even give away tickets. But mediocrity wasn't going to be enough to stop Browns owner Bill Veck from trying to drum up business. Vec fancied himself quite the showman and wasn't afraid from ideas that others may have found strange or just plain crazy. How Vec came up with the idea of having a little person at the plate isn't exactly clear, but when he did, he was really committed to it. Vec held tryouts, and when he didn't find what he was looking for, even dispatched his own PR guy, Bob Fischel, to find him someone suitable for the role. And it was Fischl who eventually found Eddie Goodell. Eddie Goodell was born on June 8, 1925 in Chicago, Illinois, to parents Carl and Helen. Now, Eddie had a pretty normal early childhood, but at the age of three, his parents noticed that his growth had been stunted. As an adult, Eddie would reach the maximum height of 3 feet 7 inches, but that wouldn't stop him from making the most of his life. During World War II, he worked as a riveter primarily due to his small stature making it easy for him to crawl into the wings of airplanes. He later found work as a performer and eventually became the mascot of Mercury Records in 1946. And it was this fame that eventually led him to being signed to a major league baseball contract. Okay, so far a little weird but nothing too crazy given the already wacky idea. But this is where things get kind of strange. Vec feared that if someone saw Goodell with team officials before they went public, it may tip people off to the project. So, in order to keep everything on the down low, Vec came up with the brilliant idea of wrapping Goodell up in blankets and smuggling him into the team hotel. He then went the extra mile and outfitted Goodell in a uniform belonging to the nine-year-old son of the Browns' vice president. Talk about commitment! Anyway, Goodell was introduced in pregame to much fanfare, and as he took to the plate in the bottom of the first inning as a pinch hitter for Brown's leadoff hitter, Frank Saucer, his appearance garnered a lot of attention from the fans in attendance, but also the umpires on the field who were bewildered at the idea of Goodell subbing into the game. Umpire Ed Hurley famously signaled for Brown's manager Zach Taylor to clear up matters and luckily for Goodell and Vec, Taylor had Goodell's contract on hand, and after reading it and seeing that the Browns had the appropriate roster space for Goodell's addition, it was game on. Goodell, much like Vec, was also quite the showman, and as he took the field, immediately began taking some practice swings to rev up the crowd to make it seem like he was actually going to swing. 
And if the reports from the game are to be believed, it worked and the fans were loving it. However, not everybody was exactly thrilled by Goodell's showmanship. Vec was said to be nervous that Goodell might actually swing at the ball, which was not part of the plan going into the game. The plan was for Goodell to crouch down low and draw a walk. Partially because Vec didn't want to see him get hurt by a pitch in the strike zone, given Goodell's small stature. If that's not enough, the umpires weren't the only ones perplexed at Goodell's at-bat, as Tigers pitcher Bob Kane could be seen visibly laughing at the idea that he had to pitch to Goodell. But pitch he did. The first three pitches were all off and high balls as Goodell heeded Vex's warning and didn't swing. But the fourth pitch, however, was also high for a ball. But that meant that Goodell drew a walk and actually made it on base, only stopping to bow to the over 18,000 in attendance cheering him on. After that, he was replaced by pinch runner Jim Delsing and Goodell went to the dugout. And that was the end of that. Even though this was Goodell's only pro baseball game, the stunt worked and grabbed the attention of newspapers and the public as well. And while Goodell was only paid $100 for the appearance, equivalent to just about $1,000 today, he was able to earn a whopping $17,000 in subsequent media appearances stemming from this now famous at-bat. Unfortunately, Goodell's story doesn't end there. On June 18, 1961, Goodell was followed home from a bowling alley in his hometown of Chicago and mercilessly beaten to death. While the exact circumstances of his death remain unclear, it's safe to say that this was a tragic end to what was a pretty feel-good story. He was 36 years old. Even though his story didn't end like many would hope it would, it's undeniable that Eddie Goodell left his mark on the game, and it shows to this very day. Not only did he get to fulfill a dream of playing in a Major League Baseball game, he now shares the baseball record for a career on base percentage. The now famous 1-8 jersey that Goodell wore during the game is now on display in St. Louis at the Cardinals Hall of Fame Museum. And due to the scarcity and the short time that he was in baseball, Goodell's elusive autograph now sells more than that of baseball great Babe Ruth. Not bad for the shortest guy to ever play the game. And no matter the circumstances that brought him there, these are things you can never take away from Eddie Goodell, who regardless of how he got there, should be remembered. And that's something I think we can all agree on. I'm Umar from Real Take Sports, and this has been Sports Revisited, the story of the shortest baseball player ever. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. And for daily videos on baseball and other sports, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell.